Welcome to Powered by Ancestry. I'm your guide, Kwesi Kunadu. Now, what is this thing, Powered by Ancestry? Well, Ancestry is our operating system. Much like a computer, where we are the computer, the operating system manages all the processes, the hardware and applications on the computer. Ancestry not only powers us, but also empowers us. Powered by Ancestry will be a series of episodes, about 30 minutes and long, just enough for us to make our way through some of the important topics that impact our daily lives in some fascinating ways where we'll combine history with genetic data or ancestral data and spirituality and healing in order to reveal or map out the purpose that we have in this lifetime or the next. Now, when you think about ancestry, at least I think about the roots authored by Alex Haley. Alex Haley was a writer, and he is responsible for this book called Roots, in which he traces, or tries to trace, his ancestry using documentary records found both in the Library of Congress as well as in his family. There was a lot of talk more than previously about black people, about Africa, you know, and uh, so in my own mind, I had been sort of trying to associate the only African I had ever known about was this African my grandmother used to talk about on the tail end of the family narrative, which had been passed down. Alex Haley's roots is important because his pursuit of his ancestry is like many of our pursuits today to find out who we are, where we came from, who are we related to. And judging by many of the companies that sell us services to trace our ancestry, Many of us are curious about how to connect with our ancestral past in order to map out what kind of present and future that we have. And so Haley, his journey begins with curiosity. He was curious about those members in his family as far as he could trace to the documentary records. That was what set me into what ultimately would become the next 12 years in the production of that book. It was just, at first, curiosity, which became extremely intense as things wore on. Now, Haley began to look at records in the Library of Congress, U.S. Library of Congress. And in doing so, he was able to trace, according to his own account, several generations back. In fact, there was one person that his ancestors or relatives claimed to be an African. And that African, of course, relates to an African history, an African past. After 10 years of doing this research of deep digging, Alex Haley writes this book, Roots. This book was an immediate bestseller. In fact, it remains one of the best-selling books of the 20th century. Roots galvanize really the, the, the curiosity and interest in ancestry, in finding out about a person's roots and the routes of, that those roots took. For people of African ancestry, their routes to finding their ancestry is a more difficult one. Why difficult? Because their journeys did not begin by choice and did not end by choice. You see, people of African ancestry, as many of you know, came to the Americas by force. And so their journey makes record keeping about their ancestry and their past much more difficult to find and to make sense of which means we have to have a different kinds of tools and different kinds of ways to figure them out. What Haley did was use these records that we have uh, available to us, but also he began to interview and found his way to the Gambia in West Africa. And there he tells us that there is a relative named Kunta Kente. Now, we'll come back to Alex Haley in a moment. What's important for us here is what drove Haley, curiosity. I'm an historian. And I study world history, African history, and African diaspora history. I, too, am driven by curiosity. In fact, I began my search into my ancestry as an 18-year-old undergraduate who was a history major, turned, well, history major after transferring from computer science as a major. I was really driven, like Haley, to f dig deep into my ancestry. At 18, I found it very important to not just find myself, but to root myself in the constellation of people that made me who I am. And I wanted to find out who they were. You see, ancestry is a package. 
It's not an individual identity. It's not an individual pursuit. Yes, we can go on yoga treats. Yes, we can meditate. Yes, we can do all the things for self-improvement and empowerment. But because ancestry is a package, but because ancestry is really a constellation of individuals, of genetics, of generations, that package requires us to dig deep, dig far, and dig wide. In doing so, I began to research my family history in Jamaica where I was born. And I began to ask questions of my aunts and my great aunts and my grandmother's sisters and my father and about his father. And that led me to the maroon town of Okompong in the western part of the island. I asked more questions of the elders there. That led me to the archives in Spanish Town, Jamaica. It's a place called Trittenham Park. And in the archives, I found records. They too were insufficient. And so I began to look elsewhere. It led me ultimately to Ghana, West Africa. Ghana was not some place that I knew anything about at 18, but I already had some, you know, clues in my family. For instance, um, we shared Anansi stories. Anansi, of course, is this important character, the spider, uh, who is a folk hero for many, both in the African diaspora and, of course, in West Africa. Um, the way my family spoke, the speech patterns, uh, the rituals. My, my grandfather was a healer. My great-grandmother and my great-great-grandma were healers. And so I had some clues in my family about a particular point of African origin. That really drove me more, but I hit this roadblock with the records. The records couldn't tell me anymore. That is, the baptismal records, marriage records, couldn't tell me anymore. The oral interviews that I did couldn't tell me anymore. And then I had this dream in 2000. And that dream said, I had to go to Ghana, West Africa, to find out more about my great, great, great grandmother. And as they say, the rest is history. So, Alex Haley, too, went on a similar journey as I did. But Haley did something that we will talk about certainly some more. You see, Haley's book was in part plagiarized from other works. In fact, there's a, there's a novel called The African, published in 1967. And that book and its author sued Alex Haley, among other lawsuits that came um, toward him. You see, Alex Haley cut corners. He perhaps invented or made up or produced a recollection or a record or a history that wasn't there in order to make the story coherent and to make the story complete. Alex Haley, though he won the post of the prize for Roots and though he won other National Book Awards for Roots, Roots has been marred, has really been stained, you know, by the, uh, what we've come to know about the backstory of the making of Roots the novel and of course the miniseries that came after. That wasn't the only book in which Alex Haley is, you know, his hand is questionable. Alex Haley is also the biographer or co-autobiographer for Malcolm X's autobiography. And we scholars and historians have come to find out that Alex Haley had his own agenda in helping to put that book together because Malcolm had passed away before the book was complete. And so Alex Haley went ahead and took out three or four chapters that were supposed to be in the final manuscript. Why did he do so? Alex Haley, like many of us, you know, we have our own beliefs and our own values. And at the time, he did not share the view or values of Malcolm X. And so he wanted to portray Malcolm in the light in which he thought Malcolm should be viewed. Someone who came back uh, from his travels abroad, someone who was repentant, um, did not see white America as being as bad as it was, or as evil as it was, someone who could be, you know, trusted. Um, to work with other integrationists of the 1960s. And so Alex Haley essentially tipped the scale. You know, he essentially framed um, the autobiography of Malcolm X to suit his particular purpose. Now, there are many lessons there for us in this story of Alex Haley. But the one I want you to take away is the lesson of curiosity. What drove him in the first place? What drove him to the 10-year journey to find his family history? However fictive or make-believe the final results are, the curiosity is, is what is the most important ingredient here. You see, being powered by ancestry means also being powered by curiosity. Curiosity is the premium fuel that makes this engine of ancestry go. And that curiosity will take you over the bumps, take you over the inconsistencies, will take you over the dead ends that you and I encounter as we go on this journey.
So Powered by Ancestry is a approach to figuring out this age-old question about what is my purpose in life and how to live a purposeful life. Powered by Ancestry will teach us and will guide us you know, through uh, that essential question that one point or another we all must confront and we all must face you know, in our human experience. Powered by Ancestry as a guiding tool will also allow us to see how we can use that power to right the things that perhaps are not going well in our lives. You see, our lives is more or less an interplay between two kinds of forces. One is energy, the other is material or matter. And so we are the combination of energy and matter. Our bodies are matter but our bodies are powered by an animating force, which is an energy or a series of energies. And so the interplay between energy and matter is very crucial to understanding this ancestry as being a package. You see, there are members in our ancestry for which we will never know, and some that we do know or have heard of. And all those members play an important role. You see, our ancestry is not simply a matter of genetics. And so for those of us who have dare to have a DNA test to figure out, you know, our maternal line, our, our paternal lines, or other kinds of information to pinpoint a certain ancestry. And the ancestry that I'm most you know, capable of, of discussing and, and therefore most curious about is African ancestry. Now, certainly there are other people that may check out this video and will take something from it that will be of value. That's wonderful. But I want to make it also clear that my particular expertise lies with African history and African ancestry. So that's what I will be focusing on through these videos with you. And so because African ancestry is the topic that I want to explore in detail you know, with you, it means that we have to have a particular approach to African ancestry because African peoples are particular people among the world's people and among humanity. And so if we're more than just genetics, if we're more than just the generations that came before us, let me spell out what I mean by ancestry as a package. That package and that constellation of, of, of people includes a series of tools. All our generations and family have tools, have things that have worked for us. So whether that be, uh, in my case, I have a series of healers in my family. Once more, my grandfather, my great-grandmother, her mother and perhaps her mother, they were all healers, known, well-known, uh, and, and really uh, people that were relied upon within the community. They were leaders. People looked to them for leadership. And these healers uh, used a range of anything from plant medicines to other kinds of therapeutics um, for healing social relationships, for um, healing physical, but also um, mental as well as spiritual kinds of injuries and wounds, traumas. And our families are also a series of traumas. That is, none of us can say that we are, you know, have not been affected by one trauma or a series of traumas in our lives. Human life is built around traumas. They're built around going through challenges. And ancestry helps to guide us through that. That is, certain challenges turn, tend to afflict certain people that are the product of certain ancestry. Ancestry also has categories, and my frame of reference for this and other videos will be uh, my people who are not only from Jamaica, but also the Akan peoples in Ghana, West Africa. And so among my people, there are four categories of ancestry. One category is the ancestors who have essentially completed their life cycle. Think Lion King, Circle of Life. They have gone through their life cycle they have lived a decent, if not, you know, good life. They have been relatively respectful, honorable people. They are the ones that should be remembered. Then there are ancestors who are more evolved. They not only have had or lived uh, a relatively good life, been decent people, you know, upstanding folk. They have also accomplished their purpose in life. And these are the ones that we call out or that we invoke in the ritual libation, whether pouring of water or another kind of beverage to the earth. 
And we call on them because they are the ones who provide a model for, for completing the circuit, for completing the cycle. In other words, if you know, we had to build a house, we wouldn't call on our mechanic to build a house, car mechanic to build a house. We call on the carpenter. Likewise, if we want to build and maintain a purpose for life, we call on those who have lived the kind of life that we want to live. We follow the model. And so that's why we call on those ancestors. Then there's a third category. These are the category of ancestors that have lived a not-so-righteous life, in fact, a very violent life. And ultimately, their human experience ends in violence, whether it is a murder or a killing or a grotesque and horrible way of exiting this, this world. Those people have unresolved or unfinished business when it comes to their purpose in life. Now, there are rituals in which to adjust or correct and make sure that they find their way home, spiritually speaking, and we'll come to some of these rituals in later episodes. Then there's a the fourth category. And this is a category of ancestors that essentially don't realize that they've actually have transitioned. And so they stay close to the earth, close to our homes, close to our families. They may appear somewhere you know, in the house or, or in the backyard. That is, they don't realize or accept that they've actually passed on in terms of their physical human experience. And so they can be troublesome, but in most cases, harmless. They're bothersome, but harmless. But still, they're irreconciled. And yet, again, there are rituals in which we can, you know, make sure they find home. So among these four categories of ancestors, they give us characters, cast members, if you will, um, in, in this story of who we are, in this drama of who we are, in this package. And that's why it's always important to know which kind of ancestor to call on for support, for help, and for assistance, and which not to call on. That is, all ancestors not created equal. And so this package called ancestry is really a Rubik's Cube to be unraveled, to be taken apart, and to see its basic parts and components, but also its cast members. And for those who need you know, further assistance and help and intervention, there are ways, rituals and otherwise, to get them there. Now, why do all this work? Why do all this deep digging? Why do all this studying? Because our clarity on our purpose in life depends on it. If we want to live a purpose for life, then we have to know this package. We have to accept this package. We have to also uh, come to terms with both the tools, gifts, and benefits of that package, as well as the challenges and issues that are transmitted through each generation from that package. And so Powered by Ancestry is a tool, is a guide to get us through this all-important process in life because we do want to know where we came from. We do want to know our roots. We do want to know who we are in the most fullest sense. But we also want to live a purpose for life. Ancestry and a purpose for life are deeply connected. They're tightly braided, right? We can't have one without the other. The purpose for life depends on the package that makes us who we are. And knowing who we are in the fullest sense of it makes us that much more capable of following through in a purpose life. And so that by the time we exit you know, this human experience and world, imagine your eulogy and imagine how you want to be remembered. Because how you want to be remembered will be based on living through that purpose for life. And so... Think of it sort of backwards or in reverse. Think of it now, however old you are, in your 20s, in your 30s, in your 40s, in your 50s, and think about, okay, when I transition from this world, when I pass on from this human experience, this material, physical experience, how do I want to be remembered? And that question of how to be remembered is answered in your ancestry. Your purpose is shaped or influenced by your ancestry, by this package. And that ancestry and how you want to be remembered will tailor your purpose in life or the purpose for life. Power by Ancestry is here to guide you through. Power by Ancestry is your guide, is your resource, is your platform for working these matters of ancestry, purposeful living, and being our whole and truest self for the long term. Until next time, stay well.